part of the lecture, let's now discuss about the different configurations of bioreactors. So, the most common one is the irritated stirred tank bioreactor, or STRs. So, it's, it's the one that actually uh, we discussed the parts a while ago. So, for the, this irritated stirred tank bioreactor, you have impeders there that, uh, that is used to mix your, uh, the contents of your reactor. So, basically, this is for suspended systems or submerged systems. So you have the, the, the source of mixing is, uh, is from mechanical agitation. So you have baffles to reduce the vortexes. However, the, the issue here is that you need to have, since it's mechanical agitation, there's a constant input of energy. So sometimes for, uh, for a large, very large system, you have higher energy input. And because it's mixing using paddles, your impellers, it produces the highest shear forces among the uh, suspensions, uh, the, the, uh, among the types of bioreactor configuration. So it's the highest shear forces. That is why you do not use aerated stir tank bioreactors when you are dealing with eukaryotic cells. If your system uh, deals with eukaryotic systems, do not use this type of bioreactor because your eukaryotic cell will be, uh, will be killed due to high shear forces. So this is usually for free, in, free and immobilized enzyme production. And microbial cell cultures, that is for usually uh, bacteria and yeast. Uh, the, the requirement is that they must have cell wall so, uh, for them to avoid or rather to survive the shear forces in this type of bioreactor. Now, let's move on to pneumatic systems. Pneumatic systems are the types of reactors. Under, it's, there are actually different configurations under pneumatic systems. But in this, uh, this classification of bioreactors, uses um, air or um, fluid movement to actually uh, induce mixing. So there is no moving parts. You, you, see, you will see no mechanical agitation or anything, no baffles, etc. Nothing. So they, 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 in, the mixing is through expansion of compressed gases. So because there is no mechanical agitation, there is relatively lower shear forces and of course lower energy requirements. So uh, usually compressed air is bubbled from below and you have fluid flow. So, because it's, it comes from below, so uh, the air comes from below, so of course it goes up. So, it will um, induce fluid flow and that will facilitate your mixing. The only issue here is that um, it's not as well mixed as, uh, as your stirred tank bioreactors. Though, uh, depending on your uh, needs, you might, um, you might uh, these types can, um, can induce mixing, although not as efficient as your stirred tank reactors. So this is another configuration of your pneumatic system. This is called the air lift reactors. So air lift reactors, we just uh, it's, as you can see here, there are there are um, uh, spargers. The configuration of the spargers on how uh, how they induce mixing of movement. So for example, here your sparger, uh, the one on the left. The sparger is at the middle, so you have no movement from uh, basically radial movement of the air. And then the, we have here, uh, the spargers are on the sides, so the movement of, well, it's still a bit radial, but towards the center. So there's a downwelling movement of current in the center. And then we also have, we can have also your sparger at the side. So there's a circular movement. Uh, up and down movement of your air so that is the fluid flow so that is uh, the mixing the the direction of the mixing what happens there okay and then we have the bubble column also another pneumatic system so the bubble column is just a simple tank and then you have your air supply at the bottom in the air lift reactors you have um, draft tubes to facilitate the movement of the fluids inside but in the the bubble column is just a simple tank and then you have a sparger at the bottom. So we have the simple bubble column, the one on the left most. So there is, um, it's actually the one that has the less efficient mixing of all. Then we can have cascades, uh, cascade bubble columns with sieve trays. You have the packed bed bubble columns, multi-shaft bubble column with static mixers, etc. 
now we have hydrodynamic system so in, in here instead of using air or compressed air to induce the mixing you are using fluid flow you are you have a pump an external liquid pump that allows for the circulation of the fluid inside so that facilitates the mixing so the mixing is through kinetic energy movement so example for that is the deep jet fermenter whereas your uh, your pump is the one that uh, actually the fluid flow is through the pump and you are also introducing air when you return the the water or rather the the contents of the reactor back to your reactor system and then we have rotary drum fermentation usually seen in solid state systems so rotary drum is that you have your reactor that is on it uh, lying on its side and then it's moving around so in here uh, this is for heterogeneous fermentation you usually have um, well it's either impellers there or just simple baffles and then your it's a drum that's actually uh, moving around so you have um, several disadvantage for this type of reactors so you have low field volume and then you have your the substrate bed is mixed poorly it will be in 30 percent of your capacity the mixing is also a problem so you have slumping uh, slumping flow for poor mixing and then uh, although it has actually it has quite a low heat and mass transfer and then depending on the the rate of the movement you can have shear forces in the substrate bed and of course since it's rotating there is no mixing um, along the 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 radius uh, no the mixing is only on the, uh, along the radial uh, radial distance but the longitudinal longitudinal direction there is relatively poor mixing on the longitudinal direction then we have tray fermenters again for solid state systems so tray fermenters especially seen in koji making process and the koji process of making sake and show you so you have your soybeans for example in tray so you have you add water so it's not fully submerged so it's you it's just like how you uh, make toge uh, mungo uh, you, you just um, put the mungo in water and then uh, put it in a several trays and then uh, put it inside a some sort of uh, uh, temperature controlled system so that is basically your tray fermenters so your tray fermenters have several trays in a, inside a temperature uh, environmental controlled system so you have this is for um, for solid state so the this disadvantage for this one is of course the bed height limitation limits the transfer heat and mass transfer of your system and of course it must have it's a tray so it's it should have it should be shallow so you, there's a limitation on the volume on the amount of the uh, on the volume you have and of course there's a this the highest risk of contamination so the next one is pack bed by reactor so usually seen for immobilized enzyme and solid phase fermentation so in here you have pellets and inside your pellets you have your um, enzymes or your organisms in the pellets so you your damp air or culture media flows through your pack bed so you basically have beads inside the the, the fermentation column and then there's some fluid movement so it can it can be your culture media or it can be air the problem here is that it's quite a challenge to scale it up so and of course again heat and mass transfer because you are essentially trying of course the the beads that are situated farthest from the source of the medium will be the one that has the less amount of uh, nutrients and the culture media or substrates that uh, it's actually the one that receives the least amount of substrate and the most amount amount of uh, the byproducts so another problem here is caking sometimes there is uh, since it's packed bed so it's basically packed it's solid you are trying to uh, to have your um, the fluid flow to a, a, a pack well porous but still packed uh, solid uh, solid medium uh, solid yeah solid medium so you have for mixing it can have some sort of caking and of course non-uniform growth because of um, 
of course the the uneven distribution of the nutrients there can also some sometimes be clacking inside when there is um not enough pressure in your system next we have trickle bed trickle bed reactors usually seen in wastewater treatments so trickle bed you have a solid usually it's it's a packed bed or even uh well it's actually an improvement on the packed bed reactor except that instead of inducing a pressurized medium to flow through the uh through the solid bed you have your solid bed and then uh, you tr just trickle the nutrients you allow the gravity to go to do the work for you in moving your medium again it also has the disadvantages of your uh packed bed aside from the pressure but the problem here is that again an even an even um distribution of nutrients so the one closest to the source of course is the highest amount of nutrients the one at the uh, near the end is the one with the least amount of nutrients then you have fluidized bed so in here you you still have your packed beads but instead of um in a purely solid state and then you just have the liquids you have your packed beads and then you submerge them into the media so the the beads are, can actually move inside the media it's suspended in the media so you are uh, using uh, either pneumatic system or fluidized movement or uh, hydraulic movement to uh, to mix basically your packed beads around but it's a heterogeneous system in, in the sense that well you have two phases the immobilized enzyme in your carrier or rather immobilized organism the biofilm in the carrier and of course but that that whole um that whole system is submerged in your medium so it's it employs both continuous mixing and force aeration it works best with fine particles because the larger the particles the more, the more difficult it is to move or to mix your system so it uh, increased flow rate ensures good heat and mass transfer because it's submerged so it is high the, the downside is high shear uh, high shear forces and high energy requirements okay so in the next video we will talk about operational considerations in bioreactors